What's good? Half Blind back with another video, and today we're going to be doing a Dynasty deep dive in College Football 25. But first things first, I do want to apologize being late on this video. I actually wanted to have this video out a long time ago. We got the blog out quite a while ago. Life happened. I couldn't get it out quickly. Sorry for that. But I do want to say here, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments because I'd love to try to find some answers for you guys. This is a long blog. I'm going to try to go through everything as best as I can, but I'm not going to read it to you guys because I've seen so many people out there just sit there and read it to you. So I'm going to go try to hit the high notes from what I can tell from each of the sections, but I'll also link the full blog in the description. That way you guys can go read it all if you want to. But I'm going to try to hit the high notes here, the things that I found interesting in each section. But I'm going to try to be pretty detailed too so that you can kind of get a middle ground. You get a little bit of summary, but not full on deep dive, but you're also not getting cliff notes. The first section of the blog talks about building your coach. Now they mention this a ton of times and I'm glad they do, but they say rock, paper, scissors a lot in this. And that is really good because they are trying to balance it in that format. There's been talk of how Dynasty used to be in the past and the fact that if you are heavily recruiting focused, that you are going to be amazing and that you're going to win because you're heavily recruiting focused. This year they tried to balance that out and try to, like I said, make it rock, paper, scissors where it's not all recruiting. It might be scheme that you need to focus on. It might be recruiting. It might be motivation. They really like to emphasize that no coach is going to be good at all three of these things. And the way they describe it is that you're going to be able to level up to level 50. You're going to have a certain number of points to put in each of your skills. And you could possibly be good at a couple things and be kind of a hybrid, but you're not going to be able to be great at all three things. They make that very clear. You're not going to be able to be great at all three things. But what they also do mention is, is that in order to fill in some of your shortcomings as, say, a head coach, you're going to be able to get some offensive and defensive coordinators who may or may not fill in those weaknesses. Or they can also add to your strengths. So let's say you're big into recruiting. You get an offensive coordinator who is also big on recruiting, and that just adds to your stats. But you don't have things like your scheme and like your player development it's just not there with those two positions. So you might be lacking in some of those areas, but you might be really good in recruiting. So you're going to have to choose again, rock, paper, scissors, where you want to be good. And you can technically build your staff to be good at all of these things, but you're not going to be able to do it just as the head coach. There's four ways that you earn XP for your coach. It's by getting players to the draft and getting them higher in drafting stats for individual games, things like getting interceptions, rushing touchdowns, things like that. There's also going to be recruiting milestones, it sounds like, or recruiting goals, like recruiting a five-star player. And there's also going to be stats for the season, such as getting ranked in the top 10, things like that. So it sounds like it's going to be very goal-oriented in how you get the XP for coaches. And those XP bonuses are how you get to your level 50 and it's very much a role-playing game in that way. Some people are going to like that. Some people are going to hate that. Personally, I love it. So I, I'm glad they're doing it that way. Um, I'm really interested to see how it plays out. I think it adds some complexity to it. And I like that. I think it's going to be a lot of different ways to build a coach. And it's going to add a lot of replay for that. I showed this graphic a bit ago. But here it kind of shows three of the archetypes. And archetypes are going to be new to College Football 25. But there's, it's kind of a role-playing element. It's been around in other things before, but it does mention there are 11 archetypes, which here it shows three. I think these are the elite archetypes. That's how I'm understanding it, at least. And then some of the other archetypes kind of feed into it a little bit. And you can be a hybrid of a couple of things, but you cannot be good at everything. And something else to note is it does mention here that when you spend skill points, you will not be able to refund them. So make sure you use your points wisely when you're building your coach, because you could end up building your coach in a way you don't really care for. And that's going to make you either want to start over or I don't know. You'll have to decide at that point. There is no refund option. 
you might want to start your dynasty over at that point. That could be a little frustrating, but at the same point in time, I do think that emphasizes the importance of making sure you're putting it where you want it to be at the beginning and then building at your coach exactly how you want it to be. And then it also shows here some uh, assistant coaches, like your offensive and defensive coordinators, the way they level out. And so they actually progress and put their points out there automatically. That's not something that you have to go in and do. It's going to uh, upgrade them automatically. And you're going to see later that you make changes to your staff. And so that's probably part of why that is, because you may not have the same OC and DC all through the year or all through the career dynasty, whatever I'm trying to say there. You might not have the same ones all the way through. You may want to pick up some new ones. And so they're going to evolve on their own. And so you have to manage your staff accordingly. The next part I'm pretty excited about as a content creator. Hopefully you guys are excited as fans of the game. But what we get here on this next piece is your coaching contract, which is normal. I mean, we had that. I feel like we had that in college football 14. Don't quote me on that, but I feel like I remember seeing that in Dynasty. But what's a little different here is you can climb the ranks from offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator up to being a head coach. You can go through and you can climb your way up from being one of the, you know, starting at one of the smaller schools and building your way up to being a national championship coach for one of the big power five schools. Or I guess I don't even know if you call it power five now because I know the uh, Pac-12 is no longer Pac-12. It's now the Pac-2. But you can build your way up to being a power conference head coach from being just a coordinator. I think that's really interesting, and I think that's going to provide some fun ways of playing through the dynasty. I might start a dynasty as an assistant coach and try to see if I can work my way into some head coaching jobs. And that kind of comes into the next part, which is the coaching carousel. Now, the coaching carousel is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to be able to pick up coaches drop coaches, sign with new schools, all of that, like you normally would in a coaching carousel, as, as you would in real life, really. You'll be able to, as a head coach, you'll be able to pick up assistant coaches that fit your scheme. You'll be able to fire assistant coaches. But keep in mind, if you fire your assistant coaches, you're going to potentially lose out on some of that recruiting that they have built up. Maybe they have their own kind of pipeline built up. You're going to lose access to a lot of those recruits that they've already been recruiting, but then you also will potentially gain recruits that your assistant coaches have been recruiting as well. That to me is huge because that adds some complexity. It's really interesting the way that works. And so I think there's going to be some tough decisions that have to be made. And I think that's a really, really good thing. Adding on to this, something else that's interesting is that you're not guaranteed to get an accepted offer. You may get, you know, let's say you're a small school and you're trying to offer a power five or former power five assistant coach, your assistant coach or head coaching job. They may not want to go to a small school like that. So you don't know. You can offer, you can find out. And also it's a five week process. So you can actually see jobs open up and close in terms of you leaving and going to another school. But the same with hiring and firing offensive coordinators. You may say new, see new ones come available and you may see some get picked up that you were looking at. So you, gotta, so you have to target who you really want as your assistant coach and go after them first because they could be gone the next week. Now we're moving on from coaching staff to recruiting. And oh my God, did they go in depth on recruiting? There is so much information out there on recruiting. I will try to cover it the best I can, but man, they went way in depth. Great to see that blog was crazy when it comes to that. I'll try to hit the best points I can find here on that. But again, the blog is linked in the description. If you really want to go read all of it, some of it is familiar. Some of it's new. I will say they spent a lot of time talking to fans of the game, talking to current coaches, things like that. They did a lot of research. They did their homework basically as to what each player looks for, what it's like recruiting on one side of the country versus the other side. It sounds like there's a lot of region-based recruiting, like a California quarterback versus a Florida quarterback. There is a lot of attention to detail here in recruiting that they did. Now, they also mention, and I've had it up on the screen here, that there are four different things they focused on when it comes to recruiting. 
To me, the last two on this list are actually the most important parts. Now, they mentioned that bigger schools are going to be able to canvas the entire country a lot better. Yeah, that's accurate. They can in real life as well. But then also the transfer portal being unpredictable and going back to point three, actually mentioning that smaller schools are going to want to be more targeted in their approach. Again, that's how it works. When you're a smaller school, you have to focus on your section of the country and recruit it well. And it looks like that's what they're having you do here as well. So if you're building now a small program into a big program, you're going to want to focus on things like proximity and your pipeline in your area. We're going to be recruiting in stages this year, discovery, pitch, and close. And I don't think that's all that different from what we did in the past. I just don't think it was defined into stages, but I feel like it existed in the past. So you would spend points on recruiting and discovering, okay, is this guy, you know, an A plus talent? Is he a, a C minus talent? What is he? So you do some of that scouting and then you would also go into pitching once you found the guy you wanted. And then you would go into trying to close with doing visits. It's just more formally broken up into stages, but I feel like those stages existed in the previous game. Another thing to note that I think is really important here with the stages is they seem to heavily align with their top 10, top five, top three. You can only do certain things in certain phases. So you have to try to make it to their top five to be able to do certain things and make it to their top three to be able to do visits. It's going to be important to climb into recruits top three to be able to get them out there for that visit. And then it's going to go into it a little later, but pairing them with things such as a quarterback and a receiver together on a visit is going to matter more this year. And I don't think it ever really mattered that much in the past, but it really is going to matter this year. I wanted to mention the my school section of recruiting because I think this is going to look familiar to a lot of you who played the old dynasty games. I see a lot of the same things here. There's some things like building a brand that I don't think was on there before, which there's no NIL, but I do think, you know, that's important to players in this day and age. So I think, yes, there's no NIL, but at the same point in time, building a brand is kind of, you know, a, well, if you're at a big school, you're going to be able to build your brand more if you're a star than if you're at a small school. So I think that does help out the big schools, but it's just interesting to see a lot of those things are going to look familiar to you from playing dynasties in past, but there are a few extra additional ones in there, but really it does seem like there are a lot of ones out there that will give the big schools more of an advantage in terms of going out there and being able to have a full country reach unless a recruit has a deal breaker that's like proximity to home. And then, well, even if you're a big school, you're going to be out on that prospect. This happened in previous iterations of the game, but you are going to be able to improve some of these areas and it'll give you ways of improving. Now, it did have them in previous versions, but I don't think it was as good as explaining the ways of improving. So obviously, if you wanted to be a championship contender, you're going to win more games and get higher in the rankings, things like that. And you knew that before, but this, it actually lays it out and explains it, which is really nice. It also shows some recruits who are in danger if you don't get certain things up. I think that's a nice view as well. And then also you're going to end up with a weekly uh, kind of a recap of where you're at and maybe where you lost and gained with certain recruits or in certain areas on your program. Recruiting is moving back to a hours based format. I believe at one point it went to points. I know it's been hours in the past at other times as well, too. One thing I thought was interesting, though, is your school's prestige is actually going to potentially give you more hours or they said it would give you more hours if your school has more prestige. But also the time of year does affect your time as well. So, for example, week to week when you're having a game plan, you might have less time in recruiting, whereas if you have an off week, you're going to have more time for recruiting, things like that. But this is also another thing that gives more of an advantage to bigger schools. That's why they did the prestige the way they did is because they wanted the bigger schools to have that time advantage because they have more resources. Makes sense. You're going to have different scouting phases this year. And one thing I think is interesting there is you can kind of decide where you want to stop on the scouting. So say you don't want to fully scout a player. You don't have to invest that many hours into it. And you could go ahead and start saying, OK, I'm going to make a pitch and I'm going to take a chance. Obviously, you're going to stop if it's looking like they have bad stats. But what I'm meaning is if you think, all right, I want to take a chance on a 60 percent scouted player 
and I want to go ahead and make my offer there and start recruiting that that player, you can start doing that. And it's we've been able to do that before, but it's it's nice to see it this way where you can kind of see the little bars of all right, so it could be between this and this stat. Um, we don't know things like abilities, things like that. You could go ahead and make your pitch and take a chance, or you could fully scout a player and see if that's what you really want. I thought they got pretty creative in ways that you can find the pitch. What was really interesting to me, other than the fact that there's just, you know, things that would be normal, like DMs and things like that, that you would see coaches doing. But I, I love the fact that there's a send the house option where you could do pretty much everything. I love that because I definitely had situations in 14 where I was like, I'm going to send the house, but I would just manually do it. It's nice to see that here, too. I think that's a cool just, uh, you know, thing that I would actually do. You shouldn't probably do it, but hey, if I'm going after the number one quarterback in the class and maybe I've got most everything else I want in my class, I like that I can send the house. All of that was just phase one in recruiting. You also now go to phase two where you soft sell and hard sell, and if you found out about the recruit in phase one and you found out what it wanted, then your soft sell and hard sell is going to be a lot more successful. Otherwise, you're going to be making some guesses, which honestly, if you played the previous dynasties, you probably did that. You probably made some guesses, but you can actually hurt your chances with the recruit just like you could back then. If you try to, you know, soft or hard sell something that they don't like, it can actually hurt your chances. On top of that, you can sway pitches just like you could back then. It sounds like the probability of swaying a pitch is based on how low or high they are on the pitch in general. And so like if it's zero in terms of like the sway that you have there, you're probably going to have a really low chance of swaying that pitch. But it does open up unique pitches to you and you only when you do the sway pitches, it doesn't help the other schools. Now we're on the final phase of closing the deal and in that phase is where you're going to do your official visit. When you do your official visit, you do need to be in their top five and you need to have offered a scholarship for that to happen. Now, some interesting things with this is I mentioned earlier who you invite on the visit matters. So you don't want to invite two quarterbacks, but it's good if you invite a quarterback and a lineman so that they are actually going to be potentially working together. That can be a benefit. Who you're playing also matters. If there's a huge ranking difference and you're way overranked for the person or the team you're playing, then you're not going to get as much of a benefit out of the game day as opposed to if you're playing, say, like a top five school and you're a smaller school and you manage to win. And obviously winning and losing is going to have different effects there. But losing when you're a smaller school against the top five, maybe not as big of a deal. When you beat somebody, it might be a huge deal in swaying. Or you can just avoid it all by just doing it on a bye week, which is still possible. You just have to manage all of these things when scheduling your visit and try to not make competitive visits where you have two quarterbacks competing with each other for time, things like that. As in real life and as mentioned earlier, you're going to have to deal with the transfer portal. They promised to make it chaotic and it absolutely sounds chaotic. They made it sound like you could potentially lose almost nobody or you can lose a mass exodus of players. So that's going to be interesting. You do see on the screen here, you have deal breakers that you promise when you sign the recruit, you got to hold up your end of the bargain in order to keep the player on your team, which makes sense in real life. Same thing. You're uh, for somebody playing time, then they may, you know, not get the playing time and they want to leave. Well, that's how it goes. You do have the ability to persuade recruits to come back. Now that is going to be dependent on your coach prestige and also the players overall. So Higher overall, you may have a harder time getting to come back, especially if you have a low coach prestige. And if you have a higher coach prestige, you'll be able to try more times. The transfer portal is going to be much shorter. You're going to get four weeks time there. And obviously that's about how it is in real life. And it's going to end up on signing day as in real life. So they are definitely trying to make it mimic real life as it should be. But it does sound chaotic in the transfer portal. In my opinion, that's going to make it more fun. We'll see how it goes, though. We'll see how it's set up. After signing day, you'll be able to move on to the off season where you're going to be able to use skill groups to upgrade certain skill groups like your receivers based on your coaching statistics that you've set up and your coaching abilities. You'll be able to train and upgrade your players, do position changes, all kinds of things like that in the off season. 
And that's it. That's all you get to do. You just level up your coach, recruit, do all the off-season training, and that's it. You never play a game. I'm just kidding. You do actually play games, and you do have impact players on both sides of the ball. That is what they're showing here is you can actually now have multiple impact players. It's not just one on either side. You can have a bunch, and that actually is meant to show who's got the better team. Listen, I don't feel bad for Alabama. They've won their championships, but my God, it looks like George is about to run straight through them based on the number of impact players, and that's what they're trying to show here is you can actually visibly see it on the screen when you probably have the better offense versus defensive matchup. Yeah, I don't feel bad for Alabama, but man, that looks stacked for Georgia. There is a new wear and tear system. That's already been gone into earlier on blogs in the past, and I did a video with some of that in there, so go back and check that out. But uh, with the wear and tear, it's going to matter how deep your recruiting is. If you have a bunch of depth, you're going to be able to sub guys in and out a lot more, and that's going to affect your injuries a lot more. Again, another advantage to bigger schools is you're going to have better players coming off the bench and better subs. You're going to have to really use that this year. And I really, everything, just the deck seems stacked against the small schools, and that's how it is. That's how it's supposed to be. Building up a small school this year will be no easy task, so I would say if you want a challenge, definitely start there. As heavily advertised, the 12-team college football playoff is here, and they have it true to life. Uh, they have it set up where you get the five highest-ranked conference champions, and then you also have seven after that, the seven highest-ranked teams, same as normal, or say I shouldn't say same as normal, same as what the new setup is going to be. So you're going to actually get to see it this way before you actually get to see it in real life, get a better understanding for things. And then you also have to, as you would in real life, wait till November to start actually seeing some rankings from the actual college football playoffs because you are going to have to wait for the official polls to come out in November in real life. And obviously you're going to have the coaches poll and the media polls, all that's going to be there too, uh, just like it normally would be. They did put in some logic, they said, trying to you know, include opinion polls and try to actually make that accurate. be interesting to see how that plays out, but they did try to keep the polls true to life as well. Conference realignment is a thing, and it is absolutely in the game, and if you want to join the pack too, you can join the pack too. You want to realign to where the Pac-12 goes back to being the Pac-12, you can do that. For me, maybe I want to go back and see what it looked like in the Big 8. Now, when you do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have the retro Big 8 branding and things like that. I didn't see anything to say that. I doubt they have the rights to any of that. It'd be cool if they did, but I don't think they do have those old rights. But you could still set up the old Big 8 if you wanted to. Speaking of that branding, I think they made a cool change here. You can see James Madison is in the ACC and the branding updated. Honestly, I love that. I really, I never thought about it too much to be completely honest, but just seeing that attention to detail and the fact that it even changes on the uniform, I think that's really cool to be completely honest. So I'm glad they added that and I'm definitely going to be looking at that a little bit more on the presentation side. Regarding schedules, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the attention to detail is great here. They have certain games set up where you play them at certain dates, just like the rivalries are always that way, such as like the Iron Bowl always being on Thanksgiving. You have dates that are locked when you go to try to add opponents in your non-conference and your conferences are locked, which is normal. That's how it was before, but you can set up your rivalries and all of those things like you normally would, you can even go out there and go find uh, old rivalries to start back up on your non-conference games. For me, bringing back KU and Nebraska is probably going to be something I'm going to do. But with all this realignment, you can go out there and set up your non-conference games still. And they do also try to schedule out your games ahead of time based on the real world. So what you have set up currently for schools that have games already contracted months or not months, years, years in advance, they will have that contracted in the game to the best of their knowledge at the time they created it. A quick but important note is team builder must be done in an online dynasty. Now you can still do a single player dynasty online. So you can still, you don't have to be in a group online dynasty, but it has to be set up as an online dynasty for you to use team builder in it. So just keep that in mind when you're starting up your dynasty. 
something I thought was cool is they even hit the red shirt right. Most of you may not know this, or maybe some of you do know. I guess you're probably pretty big college football fans if you're watching this, and especially this far into the video. Uh, you can play four games in college football and still red shirt. And so they even hit that, which is really cool to me because I've seen that a lot where players will play four games of a season, especially if they're thinking about transferring, they'll play for it and they'll sit the rest. Now, I doubt they're, I mean, maybe, but I doubt they're going to play four and then think about transferring. So they're just going to, you know, turn into a red shirt. I don't know if that logic's been built in yet, but the fact that it is set up to where it's four games and they can red shirt like that. It's pretty cool. I don't think that logic's been built into the previous games. I don't even know if that was a rule back then, but it is now, and so I love that they put it into the game. This has been mentioned in previous blogs, but awards are in the game, especially the Heisman. That's the big one. Let's be honest. We really want the Heisman out of all of them. Yeah, it'd be cool to get every award, but as long as you get the Heisman, I don't care if for running back you give me the RB1 award, I'll take it. I just want the Heisman to be in, in the game, and it's cool that it is. There's also trophies for rivalry games and things like that, which is cool to have. There are records for full, you know, full um, career records to try to break. Now, I'm guessing on some of those records, if it's somebody that's not in the game, it's probably going to be something where they go, yeah, RB1 or, or something like that, or maybe just some made up name for the records. But they are in the game and you have records that you get to try to break. Another cool attention to detail as your stats go up, so do your helmet stickers, which is cool to see in the game. I don't know if that's been in previous games or not, but I love to see it because honestly, the schools that have that, it's always been really cool to see that on there. Glad they put that in the game as well. That's it. That's all. That's the entire blog. A nice short little uh, 27 minutes. Yeah, that's the abridged version even. If you want to go read that blog, I did put it in the description, but man, I am telling you, I I even shortened it up a little bit and it's still almost 30 minutes. Absolutely go read any of it that you think that you might want to see. Go watch the trailer that's out there for it because that has got a lot of helpful, cool, just kind of quick information. They went over it a lot quicker than I did, but also I really want you guys to ask any questions you have in the chat. Sorry, in the comments, I mean, or hit me up on Twitter or X, whatever. Hit me up on there. If you've got questions about Dynasty, I will go try to find the answers for you. We're about a week out from the game, so I'm already hyped for it. The whole next week is going to be a lot of information dropping pretty much every day. So I'm going to try to get a lot of videos out. I'm going to try not to be late like last time. Like I said, life happens, but I, I'm really hoping this week is not going to be like that, and I'm really going to be able to get videos out on time for you guys because I know you're going to be excited for it. And we're getting close to launch week. I mean, it's we got this next week of run-up. Uh, I'm Personally, I'm excited about College Football Ultimate Team coming out. I know there's a lot of people that are not. There's a whole debate on whether or not they can coexist together where dynasty folks are not happy with college football ultimate team folks. They, yeah, there's a whole thing there. Also, if you want to let me know in the comments where you land on that. But for me, I, you know, I like them both. Why can't they both exist? That being said though, that's everything I've got for this video. I hope it helped you. I hope it got you excited for dynasty and college football. I'm not being paid for any of this. I'm just doing it because honestly, I'm excited for this. I'm so ready for this game to be back. It's crazy. And I'm I'm just, yeah, I'm hyped for it. Uh, I don't want to overhype you guys, which, yeah, I don't know. You guys are you guys are doing your own hype if you're at that point. But um, I don't want to overhype it and oversell it like it's going to be perfect. It's a brand new game, right? They brand new game. Yes, they have Madden that they worked off of, but there's going to be some bugs and it's going to get worked out. I'm just happy college football is back. I'm happy they put so much work into Dynasty. You can tell by how long this blog is that they really cared about Dynasty mode and they really put a lot of effort into it. I mean, even just the attention to detail in the blog was great. So I love it. I loved it everything about reading through this and i'm really excited for dynasty i'm excited for ultimate team excited road to glory i'm excited for the game in general so let me know what you guys are feeling how you guys are feeling about it if you guys stayed this long thank you guys so much because this was a long video 
Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing if I could ask for just one little extra thing there because, I mean, the fact that you stayed is good enough. But if not, I'm still glad you guys stayed, and I hope this helped. So thank you guys for watching. Peace.